In this era of grave spiritual crisis, it is not enough to simply know about your Catholic faith. That is why we need a Catholic toolbox to equip us with the practical skills necessary to live our Catholic faith to reach our ultimate goal, which is heaven for all eternity. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Join us every Tuesday night at 8pm for the Catholic Toolbox as we hand you the tools to go forth, live the faith and change our modern world today. Live on The Voice of Charity. Toolbox, the art of practical Catholicism. I'm your host and founder, George Manasseh, here as we equip you with practical tools to live your faith in our modern world of today. And we apologize for that disruption. We're finally back here in studio live here on Voice of Charity on 1701 AM. Woohoo! Exactly. We're back live, and obviously, sometimes it has challenges, but we're happy to be back. So, exactly. Always so, good. I mean, it's really a, um, it was really a, um, a, a COVID disruption. A COVID hiatus. Yeah, and, and yep. the busyness of COVID and everything else that probably uh, put us out of studio for a yes, while. Yes, it's been a busy two years, hasn't it, George? It has, yeah, since we got married. Yes, that's in right. In 2021. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Exactly. So, so I mean, so. It's, it's just, yeah, it's been very, very busy and... But we're finally back here in studio. It's great to be back here live, uh, live show here uh, for all our listeners. And we're ver- we very much appreciate their loyalty. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, a lot has happened, especially this year, in releasing The Art of Practical Catholicism number two. That is the second version of the book. Yeah. yeah Practical yeah. Catholicism number two. Yeah, and that sequel that... You know, it was long awaited, so that's very exciting. Exactly. Lots of publications. Had your book launch middle of this year. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, that was very exciting. Exactly. (coughs) I mean, it it felt like, I mean, it was already middle of this year and now Mm. it's October. Yeah. Heading towards the end of October. It's literally flown by. 2023 has just flown by. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. So... I mean, what? in the in the midst of craziness, yeah. what uh, what do we need? In the midst of the busy world, well, we in the midst of the busy circumstances, I think our faith. Is what always... do we need? Sometimes, maybe once a year, or every two years, or twice a year. We need to see our faith stronger than ever, and mm-hmm. how do we encounter that? Um, and I think this is the first time I've done it this year, so it's a retreat. Which is very good. A silent retreat. I think I don't think all retreats are silent, are they? But, no, I don't think so. But no. the effective ones are silent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I've found. Yeah, I think I think very yeah. much. Uh, if you're prepared for it, if you're able to carry it out, mm. and you're able to get through with it, a silent retreat is probably the most <clears throat> effective thing you can do for your soul annually. Yeah. Once a year for Why the lay is that? person. Because when when you told me I should go on a retreat this year, I was a bit, why do I have to do that? Mm-hmm. Like, I pray. I go to Mass, like, once a week, if not more. Mm-hmm. I go to confession, like, regularly. Why do I need to go on a retreat? Like, I do that all the time. And um, mm-hmm. my personal experience is when I actually got to the retreat, my mind was still racing with the thoughts of, what am I doing here? Like, what am I still doing here? And then that like, was on the first day. The first evening, and then until I got to, you know, confession the next day, like my mind was racing with all these thoughts. And then as soon as confession, as mm-hmm. I got to confession, peace. Oh my goodness, it was a it was a major um, game changer. So it was really intense. And but I want to know why you actually pushed me to go to a mm-hmm. retreat. Well, I've suggested it years before. Yeah. I think a year ago, the year before, to go on that silent retreat. 
uh, because I'd been doing it for 13 years. The first mm. time I went on a silent retreat was in the year 2012. And in 2012, I was in year 12. Mm. So many people were going to schoolies and <laughs> going to the Gold Coast. And then you went to a silent retreat. I went to a silent <laughs> retreat instead. <laughs> Not your conventional uh, thing to do after you leave high school, but it, it, was, it was very profound. Yeah. I mean, to, to go to, to approach the silence where you can find God and then in return, you're able to look at yourself very, very clearly in the midst of that contemplation but at the same time, because we are lay people, mm. we are lay people, we're not monastics, we're, we don't live in solitude as our vocation. We live in the midst of the world, the ordinary circumstances of daily life. That retreat had to be centered around, prepare me uh, to reflect on my day-to-day -day life and prepare me to go back to my day-to-day -day life. Mm. So <clears throat> being in the midst of that <clears throat> contemplation, in the midst of the silence and the activity after activity after activity where you wake up, there's a meditation, there's a mass, there's breakfast, a very nice breakfast. <laughs> uh, then you have a, th uh, a visit to the Blessed Sacrament. It, it does help when the, talk. when the retreat center has great food. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very Big important. Big difference. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very important. And... and and continuing through the day, I mean, there's rosary, mm. a talk, there's opportunity for spiritual direction. Yeah. There's, there, there's and, and the constant activities which take you through the motions. Mm. But in the silence, where there isn't much, very little speaking, people, people keeping it down. Yeah. I think that activated in me in 2012 uh, an ability to, to reflect, uh, grow closer in my connection with God. A relationship with God, but then look at myself, mm. mirror it back to me, and fight, and then leave with some resolutions and leave with a rhythm. Mm. For example, mm. elements of the retreat can easily be incorporated into day to day life, mm. where you can take the mass, the rosary, the lunch, the Angelus at midday, mm. different parts of the day, and it can sort of rewind you. Like you rewind the clock, you know, rewinding the motion mm. to go back, leave that retreat, go back into the world, and it should seamlessly integrate mm. uh, integrate some of the elements of the retreat, except the silence, except sometimes when you pray, when you're a mass, there's elements of silence, to, to carry out your day-to-day -day activities. Yeah. It shouldn't be something which <clears throat> puts you, I think, in a zone of being a monastic, but you're not really. And then you go back into the world, you struggle mm. to integrate that. But the most important thing is you leave with resolutions. Yeah. Concrete resolutions um, and practical, and, and to make practical tools to take action, mm. to improve a particular area of your life uh, or one or two areas. Small, uh, very few, but good resolutions. Mm. So that's, that's what did it for me. And then after that, I actually went on another retreat after four Four months because somebody was offering it. It was a oh, small okay. one. So I went back and I, I got into this rhythm. Mm. And then so I, I'd been going every year ever since, except in COVID. Mm. So mm. That, that was that sort of my journey with Don't retreats. worry. During COVID, you had four months of um, <laughs> peace and quiet. More, uh, more otherwise known as our informal honeymoon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so... <laughs> we, Very exciting. We, we couldn't see many people... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it was just exercising and... Uh, yeah. And, and So maybe that made up for it. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, be, and so that's my perspective on retreats, that they are something annually where mm. you go away from the world in the midst of your busyness, you reflect on your previous retreat. Mm. It's like a re-evaluation of your soul, mm. your interior life. Uh, you do some work. It's like it's like an annual service. You're servicing well, your soul. Like a lot at of the mechanic. a lot of people go to the doctor like mm -hmm. once a year for like a checkup, mm -hmm. like a general checkup, right? So maybe this could be like your spiritual checkup once a exactly. year. Exactly. Exactly. Or uh, I mean, some people may see the spiritual director as mm. as possibly a. a a regular checkup. Yeah, sure. Or, or, or you could see, I mean, people mainly service their car once a year. Twice a year.
Okay, it depends Excuse how much me. you use it. <laughs> Uh, so I hope you service our car more than once a year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and that once a year being in the silence, being in the midst of, with, with other people, growing in fraternity, I think that's that's very very um, important, mm. very very vital yeah, for your soul true. once a year mm. to reevaluate. Could be in the middle of the year, or the beginning of the year, or the end of the year, mm. whenever suits you. Yeah. yeah, but the retreat that you you've been on and I've been on, it wasn't with like, you know, other like couples or anything like that. It was actually for, in my case, because I'm a female, it was all females. Mm -hmm. And, um, some of the mothers, so it was a women's retreat. It was a women's yeah. retreat. Yeah. <clears throat> and then you go on the men's retreat as yeah. well. And some of the women actually brought like very, very young children with them, like mm -hmm. babies. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's nice that they actually facilitate that mm -hmm. there and that they allow, um, a space for them to be able to still attend hmm. and they can still be flexible with their children because mothers maybe more than anyone need that refreshment more than you know your regular person yeah absolutely yeah absolutely you don't expect <clears throat> men to take their <laughs> their well, child their three month old or four month old to a retreat but it, it, it can I mean in terms yeah. of feeding the child I think it's a lot easier for, for the mother Absolutely. To be so able to the do women's that. retreat would sometimes include uh, <clears throat> their uh, the child if they're very young. Yes. And and I, I, why do you think from your experience? So you went this year on your first retreat. Yes, I think I went last month. It's last been, month. So it's been a, a month. month. Yeah. That was your first silent retreat. Mm. Uh, discounting. Well, I've, I've been I've been into a different silent retreat mm -hmm. before, but it was a different dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one was a bit quicker. It was just over the weekend, um, and it was the all female retreat, the women's retreat. Mm -hmm. So that was a different aspect of it. Okay, so you had never been <clears throat> on a retreat, a silent retreat before, but you had probably I been have. on a camp. No, I've been to a something. silent retreat before. But was it completely silent? Yeah, it was. Okay, and we were encouraged not to talk to anyone. Which is good. Um, yeah. But like we really learned how to avoid eye contact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I think the retreat I went on this time, it was more like, you know, during breakfast, it was more communal as well. Like there was only limited seating. So you did have to fill up the seats and, you know, you'd be um, out of courtesy. You'd ask if someone wanted more coffee or mm -hmm. more water or anything like that. No, mm -hmm. like I think having limits like that, it's okay. Um <clears throat> which is nice because sometimes you just need to like really get it out and like start talking exactly, with your voice. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I mean the, the responses at Mass are good as well, but they're conversational with God, but sometimes you just need to, you know, have a little laugh here or there. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. So, so you approach the retreat. <clears throat> I remember dropping you off. Mm. Uh, very dark... <laughs> bush everywhere yeah i was i was scared to drive there because mm -hmm. it was so dark so i got exactly. you to drive me exactly so so i so i did drop you off there in the evening about eight o'clock and what was your impression uh, i know you struggled to fit straight in yeah give us a bit of your experience to start with i did struggle um like it was nice that when we did get there it was an icebreaker and you could talk to everybody um, say hi to everyone who d you did know. So that was lovely. Have a drink, um, some supper, um, mm. <clears throat> and just meet up with people for a little bit and get your talking out. So they were, like you could like you couldn't hear anything <laughs> mm -hmm. when we got when we got there. Um, and then you checked into your room, see what it was, unpacked a little bit, um, saw your little room for the weekend, mm -hmm. which was beautiful by the way. Mm -hmm. But I was I'm a little bit scared of the dark, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It freaked me out a little bit. Yeah. But I did have a look at the library, which was near my room. So I just picked up a book and started reading it. So that's kind of how I entered it. And during this retreat, I actually like read three books from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And I don't really read books because I don't find that I have enough time mm -hmm. in my day to day to read books. Um, and <clears throat> a few days before the retreat, they actually encourage you to, you know, take a, a bit of a digital detox. So don't look at your phone unless like you absolutely have to. Mm -hmm. And I think that was more for, for the women who did have young families as well. So like, obviously you can't 
switch off from everything, everything, because mm -hmm. your family still does need you. But for me, like, I've got you and you can look after yourself. So I was a bit lucky yes. in that sense. Yes. Um, I was a bit more lucky. So I was able to have that time to where I don't look at my phone. I asked you, I remember asking you, can I play my games? No, you can't play your games. <laughs> um, to make the <clears> most of the retreat. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, usually, you can do whatever you want, but it, yeah. if you want to, if you really want to follow through the retreat, usually have an effective retreat. with these things, you get in, you get out of it what you put into it. Right? Exactly. And so it's once a year. I was like, yeah. you know what? It's only like two and a half days. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. going to go for it. Like full, <clears throat> full in, all in. And it was good. It was really good. Mm -hmm. I found that it was really peaceful. Like I said before, like had running thoughts in my head mm -hmm. and it was just like really lack of peace. Like, what am I doing here? Like these birds are so annoying. I can't fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So I went from, oh my gosh, these stupid birds. I can't fall asleep. They're waking me up. It's horrible. And then the next day, you know, I've been to confession. I've had like one full day there. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking, oh, the birds are waking me up. And it was so lovely. And, you know, just the, the attitude change that I saw in myself. I was like, well, what happened there? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what was I battling? Um, and, yeah, I found a lot of peace there. It was a really, really warm weekend when I went. Um, but... I said to myself, I still want to keep up my steps. I still want to yeah. go for walks, especially after those meals because some of them were really, really heavy meals. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go walk. And it's in a beautiful part of Sydney. So it's not in the city. Mm -hmm. It's actually like away from the city. So somewhere quiet, yeah. Yeah, you're... It is you're, very important. You're in the bush. <laughs> yeah. um, in a, but it's a beautiful house. You're not like camping. Mm -hmm. I can't camp. Like, I'm allergic to mm -hmm. everything, so that would ruin me. But, like, this was really nice. You know, you had your own bathroom, you had your own facilities, mm -hmm. so you didn't have to, like, ask, you know, oh, when are you going to use a toilet? Like, mm -hmm. a typical, like, youth camp, like, what time are you going to get up for showers? Like, you could do whatever you wanted mm -hmm. at your own time, and it was great. And they're very, very organized at this retreat center, and I really appreciated that. And on top of that, they had several libraries and several books that you could just like pick at and read for the weekend if you wanted to um, and really focus. But for me, my experience this time, because Pope Benedict actually visited this site in 2018. And I mean, sorry, not 2018, 20, 2008, 2008, 2008 <laughs> um, for World Youth Day. And he, um, you know, he had a few days here of prayer and I decided I wanted to like the first book I picked up was on Cardinal Ratzinger's life, on his mm -hmm. book. Um, <clears throat> and I read that and I just wanted to kind of follow his footsteps. So in a way for me, I don't know if, how I made it into like a very Benedict the 16th kind of pathway, yeah. but I did. And I just read books about his life and I thought it was beautiful. Like the way of thinking that he had, the way he grew up, you know, <clears throat> as soon as he was born, he was baptized on Easter Sunday. Yeah. Like, incredible. So, and then being able to stay somewhere and pray where he stayed and prayed, I think that was the point where I was like, this is actually quite profound. And I understand that not everybody always has this opportunity. But I just thought, well, if he could do it, <laughs> like, I'm sure yeah. I can get something out of it too, right? Yeah, exactly. And so. Exactly. And I know, okay, he was Pope, so I'll hit of course, he'll get something out of it. But my goodness, the chapel there, like everything just leads you into prayer. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't hard to find that motivation to pray and to talk to the, to God uh, or to do your rosary or to do um, <clears throat> your mental prayer or your readings. So everything kind of led you in that motion. And, you know, because I was so detoxed from Instagram and Facebook and like, everything else I had no choice but what else was I gonna do I was like what am I like what am I gonna do <laughs> like besides everything that's planned there because you still have pockets of time where you can practice your free will <laughs> and you can mm -hmm. take a nap or you can read or you can do whatever um, but I ended up like I said reading those three books cover to cover and I don't read <laughs> it's it's so. it's very much the 
time that you have, mm. you get to the point where you've de detoxed from your phone, you've settled in by Saturday, mm. and you have no other thing to do but to go through the motion mm. of the prayers, the different activities, and there's pockets of spare time that are there in yeah. between. Yeah, yeah. And so that's that's and that's like, why I got into and like, your reading. And then I can't talk to anyone either. <laughs> exactly. Besides the priest for confession. Yeah. <laughs> but there was a big line. So did you speak during meals? <clears throat> no. Was there any chat no. during meals? No. I remember they played CDs. Like I think they were Perusia. From Perusia. I think they were Perusia meters CDs and like stories of like people's lives or beatified saints or yeah some people or like couples who were inspiring so. Yeah, it was great. It was um, it was really, you know, like I said, the food was great. So that was one thing you, one less thing you had to think about. And as someone married to George Manasa, um, you got to think about the food <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> you know, at this retreat, their main focus was, you're here, we're here to help you you know, really hone into your spiritual life. And I think that's what's so therapeutic about it. And I hate to say that you were right, but you were right. Excellent. <laughs> it, was, it was good. <laughs> I mean, it's... I mean, it's something that's just profound. You have to really experience it. To go on a solid retreat that is well-planned uh, and has good spiritual exercises and, and a good structure to it... Mm where you're basically really getting the value out of it. Hmm. You go there, you're in the silence, you put your phone, you detox from the yeah. world. Well, exactly. You hone in on like, yourself. You know, we paid for this. I want to get the most out of it. <laughs> like those people who go on like, you know, health retreats or like yoga retreats, they would do the same thing. They would prepare themselves before you go on the retreat. Exactly. So because you want to get the most out of it. Exactly. So now we'll take our break. We feel we have an open line to call in here with your questions or comments. So the magic number is 96256111. That is 96256111. Tolls for calls outside of Australia may apply. Or email us here at thecatholictoolbox at gmail.com or in the Facebook or YouTube comment section. Any questions that you may have here. But don't forget to call in. So stay tuned here. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> And welcome back to another week on the Catholic Toolbox, The Art of Practical Catholicism. I'm your host and founder, George Manasseh, here as we equip you with practical tools to live your faith in our modern world of today. And we're continuing our discussion about the importance of retreats with my wife here, Akita Manasseh. Welcome back. Thanks. As we continue this discussion, I think it's very, very important for people to know that we're live here and to call in here at 96256111, that is 96256111 with any of your questions or comments. So, call us here while we're live. But let's continue the discussion here. Mm. So you went on this retreat. Yeah. It was a silent retreat, probably a very <clears throat> structured one, the mm. first really structured one. Yeah, it was a jam-packed day. Mm. Yeah. So it was jam-packed, so it was full of activities. Mm but pockets of time for you to reflect yeah. and pray. So let's, let's, let's break it down. So you, you head right into Saturday. Where did you realize that, at what point did you get to in the retreat that you said, wow, this is really starting <clears throat> to kick in to help me spiritually? <laughs> um, it was like after I took a nap in the afternoon, like I said, I was sleep deprived because of the birds. <laughs> and so I think after my big nap and then I woke up and I was like, oh, we've got 10 minutes before afternoon tea. And I knew they were going to bring out these really good cookies mm -hmm. and they brought them out. And I was like, yes. Yeah. But then I went for a walk. So that was good. Um, and then I had some cookies and tea. I'd not, I haven't drunk so much tea in one weekend mm -hmm. other than this retreat. But it was yeah. great. Um, but it was just it was just so good. And, you know, you really honed in on, in on it. And, yeah, like we went through, I think, eight meditations that weekend. Yeah, yeah eight meditations. And usually I'm used to hearing one in one month. So. 
And the whole retreat's about a day and a qu- and three quarters. It's not. It's like two and a half days. It's like two and a half days. Okay. Yep. So, so I mean, eight. So it's about four a day. Yeah. Four yeah. a day meditations that are thirty minutes each. Yeah, I think it was like, yeah, I don't know, four a day, something like that. Mm-hmm. But like, I remember getting there and like. We got straight into it. Mm-hmm. Like, first meditation, here we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, it, it was just like, whoa, here we go. And I actually, my retreat was one of the short ones. Mm-hmm. So, usually, they go for a long weekend, which is, like, from Thursday night mm-hmm. until Sunday. Yep. Um, and I went from Friday night until Sunday because I wanted to ease into it. Like, if I, I felt like if I jumped in too far in the deep end, I don't think I'd ever do it again. But because I eased into it, I transitioned into it. So you didn't go on the three-day <clears throat> retreat, you went on the two-day retreat. Yeah. Which is good. Which is fine. It's good for yeah. a first-time starter. I feel like if I tried to do one day, it might be too short. Mm-hmm. So two days is a good balance, um, especially if it's a once-a-year thing. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely has to be a once-a-year. I, I, I don't know how anyone could find... I think if you're working full-time, have a family... More than once a year to go on a retreat, but if you can, it's absolutely amazing for those. Yeah. But the the point of the retreat is not to live on the retreat. I mean, it's it's great time. You know, you're away from the world. Mm. You're yeah, you're enjoying good food. Yeah. You, you know your responsibilities. Mm. But really, it's there to rewind us. Yeah. On a spiritual level and on a practical level, <laughs> to go out in, back into that busy office. Mm busy home and rewire you and, and, and purify you to go back into the office and to become a better lay person mm. in the midst of your ordinary circumstances. And I think because the retreat was run by lay people, mm-hmm. it made a big difference yeah. because when we got to the talks, then you were like, they could, I could relate to what they were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, with a know. priest. Obviously. With a, Yeah. A and there was there. one, there was one chaplain, mm-hmm. one priest who was there. And of course that's the wealth of information mm-hmm. that you need. But, that was run by lay people but, but giving Having talks, it run so. by lay people, like, I could relate to the different scenarios that they were talking about. So I think that's something unique mm-hmm. about it. Um, because a, a lay person who is giving these talks is in the midst of the, is in the, yeah. midst of the world, really. Yeah, and some of, these lay, the of, some the of these lay people are married as well. Exactly. Have been married longer than I have. Mm-hmm. So they come with experience too. So they understand the day-to-day work and stresses and everything else to hmm. give that advice from their experience. Uh, I mean, it's just profound. So let's go into some points, some practical tools. Sounds great. Uh, <clears throat> from a retreat that you yeah. have for us here this week. Let's open the toolbox and take out the practical tools. Yes. The toolbox this week is my phone. Mm-hmm. I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, so my first tip, my first tool is just go to a retreat. Like, don't worry, just get there. Um, like in one of the talks they said to us, thank you for being here. Like, and I was like, oh, okay, like I just turned up. And they're like, we understand that half the battle is actually getting yourself here, getting everything set for the weekend for you to be able to come here. Like, you know, for the mums with kids, like having... Johnny be ready, like getting ready by his dad, getting his outfits ready and all this kind of stuff. So just having that preparedness to be able to go and that willingness to go is half the battle. Mm, and, it is. And really, like once you're there, you're so far from like the main road that to even get there with all your stuff, good luck running away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't mean that as a negative thing. I mean that as a, it's like genuinely serene. And it's genuinely a great thing to be yeah. there. Yeah. So that's my first tool. Just get there. It really is. And it's a, it's very, very important, I think, mm. to make sure you schedule it in early. If you find a retreat, mm. uh, you're, you're going to go on an annual retreat to find and schedule a time where you don't make any other plans or it's not a busy time at work and you can get the leave at work. Because there's so many people over the years, you know, invited on retreats and mm. other things like that, but they can't make it because they're busy or they have something on and they're, there's, there's all sorts of commitments that creep up. Mm. You know, somebody well, gets married, there's a box. Mm. So it's very, I think, important to set up at a pre 
plan. You, you've <laughs> actually jumped the gun on my second tool, which exactly. was schedule it in. Um, and how did I know you would do that? <laughs> because you're my husband. And that's like the number one thing that we do <laughs> to keep our schedules going. Exactly. We put everything... I send you a meeting invite, you send me a meeting invite. Yeah. <laughs> it's very romantic. Yeah. Date um, night is a meeting invite as well. Yeah. yeah. When we go to confession, we have a meeting invite. We have invite. a meeting invite. Yeah. So... <laughs> so we us, don't double book. Yeah. For us, that works. We have a... Sh we, ha we use Google Calendar. But that's because we're pro that's probably because we're there's a practical tool Google Calendar. That's probably because we're millennials. <laughs> but you know, if you need to use a physical calendar, like write if, it down. Yeah, write it down. Yeah. Put it in the calendar early on, where everyone can see it, where the whole family can see it. So, like every year, I remember some communities they sell a beautiful calendar for mm. Christmas. So mm. yeah. get one of those, put it in, put it yeah. in there, write it in there, and it's solid. You know. Yeah. Unless it's like a really massive thing or an emergency and you really, really can't make it, then, you know, if it's there, you've got to commit mm. to it. Like, there were so many times when I I was like, do I really have to go? Are you sure I have to go? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I really did not want I to I think go. I struck a deal with you. Is you that, did. And what was the deal? We did strike a deal. <laughs> um, so I said to George, sure, I'll go on the retreat, but because you want me to go on to on this retreat, you're going to have to pay for it. So, Out of my um, allowance money. Out of, out of your own funding. My little bit of pocket money. <laughs> yeah, it's not pocket money. Out of your funding. So George generously... My kebab money. George generously funded my retreat um, with his funds. So thank you. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. I'm proud to be the sponsor <laughs> of the retreat. <laughs> because you care for my spiritual life. And yes. you're my husband and you're supposed yes. to do that. Yes. So you're a good husband. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that was the deal. And I said, if I like it, fine, I'll pay for it next year. And I think I'm, I'm going to have to pay for it next year. But yes. I think it's fine because it's absolutely worth it. It's, you know. I think part of the deal was that uh, if you didn't like it, you never have to go, never yes, go back again. Yes, that's true, yeah. You never found I'm it gonna helpful. I'm going to try it. If you didn't find it helpful. Yeah, if it doesn't work, that's it. Like, I didn't lose any money. I don't have to go back. Mm -hmm. But you were right. So it was very good. I, I do have to go back. But see, the thing is, you went on the retreat <laughs> and you initially went in there and you, you did, oh, it was hard. It was a shock. Yeah, it was a shock to the system, my system at mm -hmm. least. And I've been to a silent retreat before, mm -hmm. but not, not run by the same community. It was mm -hmm. run by a different community. Um, but, but yeah. But yeah, it's a shock to the system. Is it, like, is it a shock every year? I think after a second year or third year, it really isn't a shock to the system. It's yeah, really something that you need, you go back mm. for. Yeah. But but look, the silence, uh, uh, <clears throat> retreating from a busy week, turning off your phone, mm. uh, leaving your phone on silent after you had a busy week and driving up to a, a dark, you know, bushy sort of retreat area. Mm. Look. I, I didn't... It really is. It's a contrast to what you were doing yeah. le earlier that day. I mean, we don't live in a rural area mm. where you would encounter that. Like, because we visited one of your friend's houses this year. Yeah. And we encountered not only kangaroos. bush, but like 20 kangaroos in his front mm -hmm. yard. So, you know, we don't... We live in like urban... In an urban city. Mm -hmm. So, to be away from that is something that's very special. Mm -hmm. But you're still in like Australia... And it's actually so gorgeous to be able to, you know, sit under the gum trees and pray um, and pray and to read a book, you know. So very little things that we might take for granted. Mm -hmm. And I think I went for a walk and then it was off the beaten path. And then I think I saw some kangaroos and I got, I got scared and I walked back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have that. <laughs> that, that real nature But like there. a retreat where daily mass is a thing, like mm -hmm. it was so good. Like because you'd go to mass every day at 8 a.m. And then and then you'd go to breakfast. They did it so well. Like these guys... You'd are, have a meditation. These guys are experts. You start off with a meditation. Confessions first, meditation. Yeah. Mass. And then and then you go time. to mass and then you'd be so hungry. Then everyone's stomach is rumbling. Everyone's, everyone's stomach is grumbling. <laughs> and then like... That was the part of the retreat that was not silent, the stomach mm -hmm. grumbling. 
Um, but then you go to breakfast, mm -hmm. and it was glorious. And then the lunch was even better. And mm -hmm. then the dinner was like... Yeah. It was like, it wasn't... It's not like, you know, Michelin star food, right? But it's like home cooking. It's home cooking, but elevated it was to delicious. a... Uh, I believe, elevated to high restaurant quality, but as, with a homey touch. As someone put it, it's simple food, but it's it was done very well, so... Yeah. Absolutely. I understand why I keep going back there. So, so you settled in and you, so just to get back to that, where, where you said, is it a shock every year? You sort of go back every year because you want that, not a shock, but you want to rip apart, you want to go away from <clears> the world. <throat> but it becomes easy every year. Once you go that second year, third mm. year, becomes something you desire every year. Mm. Going on my retreat. Yeah. You know, let's say, I yeah. usually go July, August mm. after I've hit, you know, End the financial year. It's the middle of the year. Uh, you through <coughs> the first six months of the year. Yeah. It's a good time to reflect. Uh, mm. It's also maybe a little bit more of a quiet time mm. uh, with commitments, weddings, and stuff like that. Yeah, because so it's after I can our, devote a week. It's after our anniversary. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. it's a good time to really reflect and renew yourself, and and it's absolutely amazing. It's mm. it's it's just absolutely. Phenomenal. It's something every year you want to go back yeah, to. It becomes cool. part of your routine. Hmm. It really isn't much. It comes and it goes so quickly. It does. It went, think I, I remember it. thinking it went, so, it went so quickly. But the way many people describe, many friends of mine describe it is, is this. You go on your retreat. You arrive at Friday 8 o'clock. There's one meditation and uh, you retire. Hmm. So forget that night. Hmm. Saturday is one full day. And then Sunday you leave by 3, 30, 4 o'clock. You're finished. Yeah. So really, it's a day and three quarters. Yeah. I mean... that I think that's why every single year on a site retreat, that, that's how everyone... You, that's how you like to round down. Yeah. I like to round up <laughs> because we're wired differently. Exactly. But, but to my, uh, to, back to my point that I'm trying to make is, <clears throat> is uh, when you start going on a retreat every single year, you really value that time. Mm. You want to get that most out of it, to get into the state of contemplation, pray, uh, recollect your life, uh, <clears throat> recollect yourself, <clears throat> and then come up with resolutions, things you want to focus on f for the next year till you get back on your <clears throat> next retreat, or at least working through the spiritual director through the year, you know, once a month, perhaps. And then finally, uh, you live with some resolutions. <clears throat> you were closer to our Lord, you rewinded yourself, refreshed yourself, uh, uh, let's say uh, personally and spiritually, you've rewound your routine of prayer and integrating that back in better with your day-to-day -day life and you have some resolutions mm. to leave with. Mm. You leave with something. Yeah. So did we go through the third practical tool? No, I did have Let's get into one. the third practical tool. The third tool, I think this is what I would have told myself if I've been on a retreat before, would be to prepare, prepare yourself. So like, for example... If you are someone and you've done like a water fast before, a water fast is where you don't eat for 24 hours and all you do is drink water, Yeah. which sounds mental, but a lot of health benefits. Anyway, it's a different topic. Um, <clears throat> if you do a water fast for 24 hours, you have to prepare your body for it. You can't just be eating your Maccas, eating everything mm -hmm. for like as regularly, three meals a day kind of thing. And then you go on a water fast because your body will break. So it's a shock, real big it's shock. It's a really, really big shock. Yeah, you'll feel the hunger. And it's a physical yeah. shock. It's not even a spiritual shock like what I had. It was a big, like, it was a big, it's a big shock to yeah. the system. Yeah. So they recommend before you do a water fast, don't quote me in this because this is probably wrong. Um, but this you does have not to, count as any medical advice. You Seek have to, a relevant professional. you have to eat, you know, very clean. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to eat quite clean, you know, salads. Maybe Zata. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can squeeze that in. There you go. Um, <clears throat> love nail, all that sort of stuff. You've got to there eat the good go. stuff, the good stuff for your tummy. But if you could, like, so that you succeed your water fast, right, and you slow down on the eating, maybe you have two meals or three light meals or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but in a retreat, <clears throat> you have silence. You have nothing else to do. You don't have your phone. So... Or you're looking at your phone briefly or it's on site. I looked at my phone to to get to my prayers. That's it. To get yeah. to my morning and yep. evening prayer. Yeah. Because I'm a digital girl. Mm -hmm. I'm not 
I'm sorry, I don't have books. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I don't like read books. Like most people, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I use my phone to do my morning and evening prayer. Mm -hmm. But, like, other than that, and, like, I think I said goodnight to you, like, mm -hmm. within the retreat. Like, I, yeah. we didn't even talk to each other. Yeah. Um, so part of my fasting had to, I had to kind of get ready for that the week before, um, mm. which was good because they jump-started it. They sent me a few documents to read. Why, are you, why do you do a retreat? And then, like, what are the benefits of a retreat? And then this is the schedule that we're going to use. Um, this is, like, where the room that you're going to be staying in. So you were ready. You were getting ready in that sense. Mm -hmm. But if I was to go to next year's retreat, I would probably choose a few books that I would have wanted to read because mm -hmm. I was kind of caught off guard and then I kind of just chose, you know, what I was most drawn to in that <clears> library. <throat> but I would probably choose something that was more, like I had a bit more of a path as to yeah. what I could take so I could get the most out of this retreat. And then I could talk to my priests about that during the time I had, like I was in the confessional. Mm -hmm. or, or an appointment for spiritual direction or, yeah, on the retreat. Or a spiritual di like direction. So you like, get to talk. Yeah. <laughs> so... <clears throat> you can prepare yourself, you know, just like how we prepare for Easter Sunday, right? We fast. We fast for 40 days. And, you know, this is just a retreat. But the culmination of it is obviously you come out with maybe a rejuvenated outlook on life and with better resolutions. And just like how we come out at Easter having not had the feast, and then we have the feast mm -hmm. and your body is so ready for the feast. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just that joy that you get out of it. So yeah. it's very, very special. And that's something that you do get out of the retreat. So prepare for it mm -hmm. and you'll get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, and you mentioned a very important point here, which is uh, and something I picked here from this discussion is that you're planning for next year. I think that's part of the growth mm. is a retreat yeah, isn't thanks. a one-off isolated yeah. thing. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a cycle <clears throat> every year mm. you plan for this retreat, you gain the growth out of it and then you live your life. A year flies by quickly. Next year will come <clears throat> around the same time. Mm. You try to book something in yeah. and you take the resolutions. How do I do Mm. It's it's sort of like battle. You go out yeah. to war. You get mm. you, you refresh yourself, and you come on a retreat, a hospital. You look at a few wounds, a few resolutions. Mm. You get a bit of training from your commanders. All right, this is what we're going to do when you get back in, and then you go back into the world. You know, we try to maintain. You know, <laughs> the bruises, mm. you know, mm. the scars, the uh, the the wounds of battle. Yeah. But then we come back better and better every year. It's yeah. a cycle. Your next retreat. Mm. You know, your, your your spiritual life should really, I think, revolve around your retreat. Yeah, it could. I think it's better if it revolves around the Eucharist, though. Exactly. Ah, got you. Yes. <laughs> Which, well, it do, well t on a theological level, it actually does <clears throat> revolve around As when you go to your next Mass. Yeah, yeah. On a cosmological, ontological, spiritual level. Hmm. But... But, but you have mass in the retreat. Yes. So, so I think the review point of your spiritual life should revolve around your mm. retreat. Mm. Uh, uh, okay, fair. And then you sort of follow up little milestones with the spiritual director in between. Yeah. To keep on top and keep mm. accountable, I think it's very important. Mm. So, is there anything that you'll recommend to our listeners about going on a retreat if they haven't been on a silent retreat? <clears throat> What would I recommend? Um, look, as nice as it is to go with your mates, if you know you're going to be tempted to talk to them, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, and if you want to bring them, just clarify with them as well that, you know, this is not a time for us to talk. We'll mm -hmm. I'll talk to you on the drive home kind of thing. Yeah. So that's something you also have to deal with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what else would I tell people? I think... I just tell them, keep an open mind because um, if it's a new experience for you, you should definitely keep an open mind to it because you don't know what you will encounter mm -hmm. um, on your, in your spiritual life. I know it can be a, a <clears throat> really new experience for many people. And it can be daunting. It can be. Because I was like, 
I was I was feeling that. And I've seen people on uh, this silent retreat uh, year on year mm. uh, be daunted on <clears> their <throat> Saturday <throat> evening oh, that they can't talk and it's a bit of a struggle. Mm. And they need to talk a little do bit. You, do you see people watching a game whenever you're at a retreat? <laughs> like, have you ever seen that? I'm just curious. Watching a game? Yeah. Not really, no. Do they... Maybe okay. in their room. Oh, okay. <laughs> They'll watch something. Maybe. Yeah, but I think out with the activities, no one's... From my experience. But mm. I think I th it, when you do see those people who are really struggling, you try to talk to them mm. a little bit, you mm. know, in a low voice, a silent voice, keep, to keep the silence, mm. uh, maintain the spirit of silence on the retreat. In my, what goes through my head is, well, you know, this is somebody who, just like the gym, you know, you might, your first time at the gym, you know, you might, you might need to crack into it a little bit yeah. and it just gets easier and yeah. easier. The weight's too heavy the first yeah. time. It, it is a, re mm. it's a good workout. Yeah. And the first time it is a shock, yeah. but you know what, if you have the right attitude, it's a good shock. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you don't go to the gym, you don't go to a class, you don't pay for something not to get the value out of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Think of it from a value perspective. Mm. If you go on a retreat, you really want to be shocked. You want to be mm. pushed a, a little bit. Not, not that it's, it's, it's not intense, mm. you know. We make it sound like it's intense. It's just the silence sometimes is a little bit hard for mm. people. Yeah. And to go through the motions. But it, Especially in a world where everything's yelling at you. You're like you're getting advertising from different marketing things. And we're and always there. doing something. We're yeah. always on our phone. I know. We've got something to do. Mm. You know, wh when was the last time for an hour <clears throat> we sat down and did nothing? Um, we do that every night, but we're literally asleep. <laughs> so. <laughs> or at the end of the night. We're all, look, as a society, we are always constantly doing something. Yeah. Especially social media. So that's why it can be hard the first time. But mm. uh, it's, it's the greatest thing that you'll do for yourself, for your spiritual life, is... To go on a silent retreat, prepare yourself the week before, perhaps, maybe by spending an hour of adoration, mm. Mm. half an hour each day or 15 minutes each day, and get used to the silence a little mm. bit the week before. Yeah, and then I think once idea. you get out of the silent retreat, to not go straight back into a party or a conference or a seminar. Oh, that's interesting. It's <laughs> an interesting tip. Which we did. Uh, right Because after we went retreat. straight to a seminar right Exactly, after. yeah. Because... <laughs> I was giving a talk there, so yeah. uh, we had to go straight. Mm. But it's not ideal to mm. maybe go straight back, have a quiet night, easing mm. back into the world. But I still felt so at peace anyway when we came home, even though we had a busy evening. So I still felt like the silence was still within me. Mm -hmm. And do you think because the retreat was run by lay people, and it had sort of a professional atmosphere. It wasn't a monastic no. sort of religious mm. atmosphere. No. It was a lay run atmosphere that, yeah, brought you to recollect yourself, but it kept a professional environment mm. that sort of simulates what day to day life is going to be yeah, like. Yeah, correct. I thought it was great. Like, they were giving great advice, mm -hmm. especially like. And it was centered on your professional life. Yeah. And your day to day. The and talks are life. about and your married, married life professional day-to-day -day life it was great because i was like because to get advice like that you know not just from your parents obviously but from people who are steps ahead of you maybe years ahead of you because you know maybe they've been married 16 years mm -hmm. i've been married two years so mm -hmm. obviously that's going to have different knowledges <clears throat> so having that kind of coming from that background mm -hmm. i think it's very yeah. helpful yeah Okay, and let's go through where, let, uh, just some guidelines mm. for our listeners here. Where can people find, uh, wh what's a bit of a criteria for people to find a, a, a good retreat that can have this sort of, these sort um, of parameters? If you, <clears throat> ha you know, if you're in a parish and they're running a retreat, or um, if you're part of a community and they're running a retreat, that's all, that's usually a good idea because you're already part of that community mm -hmm. and you kind of know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. And you're, what you're getting into is probably just like a deeper level of that. So it won't be too harsh on your on your system, I guess. Is, that's what I'm trying to say. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what <clears throat> I would say is to speak to your parish priest mm. or spiritual director 
whoever they may be, and to find an organization which offers a retreat that is silent, purely silent, mm. follows uh, uh, spiritual exercises. And, and I recommend highly the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the spiritual exercises. There are retreats that run for three to five days or two days uh, with the, using those spiritual exercises. Uh, there are um, uh, ones that are run around Sydney in, mm. in Kenthurst. Mm. Um, and you can look up different Catholic silent retreats to find a silent retreat, preferably if it's also not just run by religious especially if you're a lay person, mm. maybe someone who's lay, mm. who has that experience that can guide that retreat. Yeah. And, uh, but, but the first point of contact should maybe be your parish priest or somebody perhaps in the community that has gone on the retreat mm. because yeah. that way they can guide you into what to mm. expect. Yeah. yeah. If someone hasn't done it themselves, there's no way they can give that advice. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Yeah. So... I think I think we've wrapped. Uh, we've given yeah, a I think great we've, succinct summary. I think we're very thorough tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly. So, to our listeners, go on a retreat. Take that leap of faith. Find almost, out where there is a retreat. It's almost the end of the year, so if you have the opportunity to, you know, finish off the year with that, or maybe start off next year with that, that's yeah. always a good. So we have point. October and November. I think before December really starts to get busy. Mm. I think this is a window of opportunity for the rest of the year now to really go on a retreat. So, really, October, November is a great time. So, mm. take that leap of faith. Look for a, a there are retreat centers in, Kent, uh, in Kenthurst. Uh, there are other ones around Sydney. Speak to your parish priest as well and find a retreat. And as our Lord retreated on Mount Tabor mm. uh, with the apostles, we too need a retreat. So, take action in that area. I think we're equipped with the practical tools. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you. It's been an absolute me. pleasure, and we're back here live. So thank you for tuning into the Catholic Toolbox, the art of practical Catholicism. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, wherever you get your podcasts on every single platform. Uh, go to The Catholic Toolbox. That is The Catholic Toolbox, wherever you get your podcasts on all platforms. Hit the subscribe button and follow us on the podcast platform to re-listen to this episode. So thank you for tuning into the Catholic Toolbox. The Art of Practical Catholicism. I'm your host and founder, George Manasseh. Until next week, God bless, take care, and take action. In this era of grave spiritual crisis, it is not enough to simply know about your Catholic faith. That is why we need a Catholic toolbox to equip us with the practical skills necessary to live our Catholic faith to reach our ultimate goal, which is heaven for all eternity. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Join us every Tuesday night at 8pm for the Catholic Toolbox as we hand you the tools to go forth, live the faith and change our model world today, live on The Voice of Charity. Mm -hmm.